Hi, and welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Lansing for our weekly spiritual message. I'm Reverend Sharon Ketchum. I'm here to you live, just as you are live right at this moment. So let's take this journey together. This is the third week of Advent. It's the week that we celebrate the Advent of joy. And of course, we can't go through this week without singing that song, Joy to the World. A special surprise, you get to be quite a part of the choir today. Unity of the Bay has put their to choir together to um, do this wonderful presentation uh, because they know more technology than I do at this point. But we get to sing along with them. We get to sing joy joy to the world. present together. The Lord is this, come. This wonderful day. Let her receive a key. Heaven and nature sing. Everybody say joy. Joy to the world for the Lord. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him rule. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing.
a moment to be with them as we get to their credits and just honor all the people that gave of their gifts, talents with such joy today. It certainly helped set the tone for me. Did I hear you sing along? Get right in with the choir. Even if you were singing internally, you know in your head and in your heart. Or maybe in the shower. So thank you, Unity of the Bay. That was just awesome. Just awesome. Okay, we can stop sharing here and get back to Unity in Lansing instead of all the way down there in Miami. <clears throat> well, we are on an Advent journey. The, the theme this year has been asked and it is given uh, by the Hicks, Mr. and Mrs. Hicks, who have um, been inspired by the words of what they call Abraham, kind of a collection of wisdom from spirit. <clears throat> And it's the idea about really setting ourselves up into that place where we're one with the universe. So as part of this journey, we began with hope. And hope really is when we are at a mental state of standing, knowing that we're on the brink of good, we know there's something better coming. And the terms that I used that week was rampage of appreciation, that we get to stand on that brink of hope well, we are so grateful for everything that we have right now in this moment. And then last week, uh, Alicia Sobagal spoke to us about peace, that peace that passes understanding. And I think peace is when we begin radiating the unity of oneness, that there is, though there may be diversity in how we show up, there's something much greater, which is the interconnectedness, the oneness of all of us expressing uh, in that Christ light. And this week is joy, which I think is celebrating the complexity of life. Complexity. Life is not stayed and like a one-tone note. Life has, it's like this magnificent orchestra, the many verses of the voices in the choir that all blend together to make life so rich. And in truth, joy is that vibration of God expressing in and through us. Isn't that a wonderful place to be? And sometimes, you know, it takes a while to get to it in the Christmas journey. At the beginning, I know I really rely on hope because I think, oh my goodness, all the things that need to be done in order to celebrate this day. And how do you feel? You know, you're the only one that knows exactly how you feel. But whatever it is, know that what you are feeling right now is you standing at the leading edge of your thoughts. Because we know that we co-create our own reality, that the thoughts that we hold in our mind, and the mind, and talk about the mind and the heart together, that bigger mind, that is what manifests as our life. It's a journey. It's a journey that is always changing, but it's a journey that we're on to have this life experience. And it reminds me of the Christmas story in the journey of the Magi or the wise men. We like to say three, though the Bible doesn't specify, but three seems like a nice collegial number. And as I think about them going out on their journey, they do it with such hope. And I, I think about how their feelings must have changed as they got closer and closer following the star. And the gifts that they bring with them, they had these gifts right at the beginning, but I bet the meaning of the gift, the intention behind the gift, morphed as they went on their journey, as they struggled and sometimes had smooth spots probably in their journey, um, as, as they kept moving forward, they, they really um, picked up a, a sense of intention and meaning that may not have been there at the beginning. At the beginning, it may have been perfunctory, okay? From all the things we've learned in our head, just the intellect, this is what we need to do. But as they went on this journey, this deep growing sense of connectedness and expectation and hope just had to grow within them. And that is our journey. You know, at the beginning, we have all the gifts that we ever need. It is the powers that are within us. But each step of our journey through life, we understand more. We understand more about ourselves, mainly. 
we we appreciate more we appreciate what we do have i mean we've all been so gifted you know during the time of covid how we appreciate our health so much differently during this time of physical uh, separation and for many of us isolation we so appreciate those times that we can just speak with another person or see another person's face even on zoom or even at the grocery store that we see other beings moving around in person, we have a just a deeper and different sense of appreciation. And I think as we go on our journey, we become more conscious of what we want life to be about for us. Many of us create bucket lists, those experiences of life that we want to have while we're still having this life experience. <clears throat> and we understand too that the power comes from within, our strength, our, um, our imagination, our drive is something within us. It has nothing to do with any outer conditions or any person other than ourselves. And with each step, we move closer to a greater expression of the Christ consciousness within us. So the Magi metaphysically also creates a beautiful story. The wise men come from the East and the East is the beginning. It's that um, that that's where the light comes from in the morning. That's where thoughts begin. That's the, the beginning of an awareness of our inner thought. And the wise men, the magi, represent really our soul wisdom, wisdom that is beyond time, wisdom that has come with us, that has been embedded into us by that very impulse of life itself. And the gifts that we bring to life in truth are the gifts of spirit because it's spirit is has a richness to it that is one of our gifts there's a richness within our thoughts within our feelings there is a beauty in spirit and most of all there is an et eternity within spirit that we feel like we're in this time and place we are part of this eternity without beginning or end and though wherever we were before this body was formed and wherever we'll be afterwards that is that experience of that eternal quality of spirit itself. They bring gifts to the Christ child, the wise men, the Magi. So too, we bring our gifts of awareness to the Christ being born within us. And that star represents our intuition because we, though we may not have the words, we may not have even the directions, uh, as simple as they could be. There is something within us that that guides us to do the thing that our heart desires. You know, there is a truth that the better you feel, the easier life is. And we know that how we feel really determines our vibrational frequency. And, and the higher the frequency, the more we feel like we're in the flow, that life is easy. And the more that we are struggling, that we are separating, that we are fighting what's going on instead of welcoming it, the more resistant we are to us, the more we are separating ourselves from this vibration of spirit. Think about it. When, when you're struggling, when you're upset, when um, you're, you're just, yeah, it, it's just difficult. Life is difficult. Everything feels slower. It's a much lower long vibrational thing. And as we raise our vibration, as we lighten up, we get to feel like this is easy. This is a breeze. Things just seem to happen and support us. Uh, just serendipitous things just kind of lift us up. But since we are human, we are never 100% in that high vibrational frequency. A lot of times we find ourselves much slower which is one of the reasons I have always been inspired by Jesus. You know, my favorite stories are about when he lost his temper, um, when he felt forlorn and, and just lonely away from other people where he didn't feel supported. But yet there were other times when he could raise his vibration so high that he could inspire healing within other people. You know, he always said, it's not, not me. It's your faith that has made you well, no matter how much people want to put it on him. He understood each person had to do that raising of the vibration for themselves. 
Jesus celebrated many times. He celebrated with his friends. They would have dinners together, picnics together. They would travel together. He also celebrated with kind of the outcast of society. He had dinner with tax collectors and what the Bible calls sinners, which you'd probably say were prostitutes or ladies of the night, whatever. He even had dinner one night with a Pharisee, so it's been told. And this is particularly strange because the Pharisees were all about the outer of how to do things to be holy, to be good. But inside there was something missing. They weren't in harmony. They weren't being authentic to their teachings. They had the outer trappings, but not the inner connection, that, that inner higher vibration within them. But no matter what the situation, whether Jesus was with friends or foe, um, those that were popular, those that weren't popular, he always found a way to let his light shine. And I think he let it, he was extraordinary because I think his light shone more frequently than most of us. And he had this attitude, especially when he met people that disagreed with him or tried to put him down or um, tried to trip him up in his theology, whatever that might've been. But he said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And I understand that is he desired compassion, not punishment. It was more important for him to let his light shine, to find the oneness, the unity with everyone around him, whether he agreed with them or not, whether um, they were friends or foe, just to let his life shine unabashedly. That's actually, you know, what a candle does. I, I look at the candles over here. and Candles just shine unabashedly. They're not afraid of losing their light. They're not afraid of not having enough. They just do what they do. And it's, it's just so free. And it's the same way with our, when we raise our vibration to experience that Christ consciousness, we have a light that never diminishes us. It just always expands us. Speaking of candles and light, this is the fourth day of Hanukkah, wonderful Jewish celebration. Hanukkah means to dedicate. And the tradition comes from a story. Uh, one time the Greeks overtook uh, the Hebrews and they destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. And the Maccabees, one of the, the tribes of the Jews, had this tremendous battle with the Greeks and they, they won and they were able to regain their temple. But their temple had been ransacked. It was just absolutely a mess. Things, everything was taken out of it or destroyed. And they went back in there and it was very important to the temple priests, to the rabbis, to rededicate their temple, to bless the temple. And they would do this by lighting candles on the menorah. And they did find a menorah is a little bit broken, battered, but it would certainly work. But they could only find one small container of oil within the temple. But they put the oil in the menorah and they lit it and they prayed. And the light that should only have lasted for a day lasted for a full eight days. It was the miracle of the menorah, of the light, if you will. And it's just an amazing story that gets to a tradition within homes. There's a certain sense of warmth of sitting in candlelight, especially when all the other lights are off and it's, it's dark outside and yours is a light in the window and each day that light grows brighter. And some people say that the miracle of Hanukkah is at the light of the eighth day, that it went on to the eighth day. But the overriding thought is, is people have have talked about this time and time again, is that the real miracle is the first day, that they lit the candle on the first day with a faith that would burn through. It's so different to be grateful before it is all manifest. And in doing that, you support the manifestation of it as opposed to waiting until you have everything and then saying, thank you. No, we, we just give thanks and gratitude in advance. And the first candle lit right in the center of the menorah is called the shamash. And all the other candles are lit, lit off of this. And it so reminds me of our Christ candle. In our Christmas Eve service, traditionally, when we're in person, we'd have the Christ candle and the 12 power candles are all lit off the Christ candle. Because we know it's that universal light, that first light within us, within our consciousness that feeds and support everything else, that quality of eternity and infinity. <clears throat> so, as we're going through this week of joy, becoming conscious of our thoughts, becoming conscious of our emotions, yet again, I, I think we live half of our life asleep. We just, we go through the motions, but to really take some time, an occasional moment here or there, and just check in with yourself, do a little checkpoint, what you're feeling. Because remember, 
Our thoughts, our thoughts tell the mind, create our own reality. We need to be aware of this. We always get to label it and name it. We always get to pull on that light of hope to lift us up when we're down. You know, as we're going through this pandemic, I can remember a number of times that I thought to myself, I wish the whole world would just stop several days, maybe a week, and then I could get caught up and just be in the flow and enjoy life again. Well, the whole world stopped. We're nine and a half months here. The world stopped. And I'm farther behind I was, <laughs> than I was at the beginning. I guess my thinking was a little flawed on that. But what I do think is would I have the courage to have lit that candle on day one, to have lit that oil in the menorah? Would I have had the faith that by taking the action now, I don't have to worry about the future, that there will be enough for all that I need to complete what it is that I complete? So the title of this series is Ask It and Is Given. And what do we ask for? We ask from the desire, the desire of our heart. And the word desire, I always think of as of the father. In French would be of and sire, meaning the father of the creator, of that impetus force of life. And so this week we're talking about having the desire of joy from our heart, the desire of, of joy, because we are in that state of desire we're aware of new possibilities. We are aware of, it's like a fresh, free flowing anticipation of good without hesitation. There's just an ease to it. On the other hand, some of us may find ourselves yearning and yearning in old English means to beg or demand. Basically what it means is you are focusing on what you don't have. And when you focus on what you don't have, when you're begging for something, out there, when you're demanding something come to you, you're negating what is already within you. It's a very strong form of resistance. The idea of desire has absolutely no resistance. We are assured, we light that candle the first day, knowing that the infinite quality within us will bring forth that which is our heart's desire. Now in saying this, I'm gonna say, put aside the idea of time, Put aside the idea of finances, money. Don't put those kind of limitations on our earthly limitations. And if you do that, every desire you have, the universe will totally respond with such a free flow. You will be surprised at how you're feeling and how that it lifts you up. The Apostle Paul, when he, he wrote to the Romans, said, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in God. May the joy, of, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. It's okay to be spiritual and to be joyful. These do not exclude each other. Uh, just in case you have one of those old teachings that you know, if you're really holy, you're kind of quiet and somber. So I'm gonna take a moment and ask you to think about what you're thinking about. Maybe a struggle that you're having or a challenge. I mean, certainly the world condition with the COVID is, uh, is challenging, politics is challenging, we may have a health challenge. As you think about that, reach for a thought that might make you feel just a little bit better. If it's that, you know, you're in quarantine, like I'm, a thought that goes through my mind has been my first Christmas without um, either of my kids or any of my grandkids with me. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of a heavy thought. My vibrations don't feel very great in that. But if I start thinking about it a little deeper, I can, I can find a thought that makes me feel better. I'll be able to see them on Christmas day, even though we're miles and miles apart. My daughter's halfway around the world down in New Zealand. I can think about, this will be a memory. We'll do something on, on Zoom and I can record it. We can keep this memory forever. I can find thoughts that lift my vibration and help me feel better. And when we put aside those limitations, of finances and time, the universe responds in such a way that the ideas we have to make other demands to ask on the universe will just, it just explodes as we're going. In the, the musical Hamilton, there's a song that says, I will never be satisfied. And it's true in the sense of not that you feel you're lacking, but knowing that there's just so much more to experience in life, that there's such a richness, such a beauty, such an eternity about life itself that we just take it all in and more and more and more. Sometimes it is a matter of delayed gratification. 
but there's no right or wrong way to do it. For example, how do you eat your pie? Hmm. I like to start at the back end and move up to the front because the front to me is the best piece when it's got the most of the filling in and the least bit of crust. So I want to savor the best for last. But other people might start at the point end, the best end, and enjoy that because oh, maybe they think they'll be full by the time they get to the back end of the crust. It's not that there's a right or wrong. It's about being conscious of our choices, choosing those better thoughts that resonate with us to raise us to that higher vibration. I want to take you back to the 1920s, President Coolidge. He was kind of a dour uh, president, and he was a, a man of very few words, shall we say. And one day, a senator took Will Rogers to the White House to meet the president. Now, Will Rogers was kind of a folksy humorist, and he had a very dry, wonderful sense of wit and humor. And he warned the humorist, uh, the the senator that took him in warned uh, Will Rogers that Coolidge never smiled. And Rogers replied, hmm, I'll make him smile. They went inside the Oval Office and the senator introduced Will Rogers to the president. And he says, Will Rogers, I want you to meet President Coolidge. And Will Rogers, without cracking a smile, his very dry face said, hmm, sorry, but I didn't catch your name. I'll give you a minute to smile and laugh, hopefully a little chuckle. Chuckling so good for us, laughter is even better. So joy coming along the way. Humor is so important. It helps us to face the difficulties of life, that diversity of life that carries the whole gamut of things that we're going to experience. But through it all, through the toughest times, to simply not take ourselves too seriously. It's like the cab driver who said, I don't really enjoy my job so much as the people I run into. Okay, okay, you got it? Yes. Difficulties are not to delete our joy. I think in some way it's a secret way to increase our joy because we get to choose those thoughts that make us feel better. We get to look back not in anger, but in laughter. And that really does so much good for us, body, mind, and spirit. So I wanna share with you a spiritual practice for this week. Here we go. There we go. I want you to run an experiment. Take one day to find as much joy as possible. And when you're looking for it, look for it in people, look for it in the work that you do. Of course, look for it in God. And do not forget to look for joy in yourself. Because remember, it can take just one day to find joy along the way. Thank you. Now I just want a moment, take a moment on behalf of Unity Spiritual Center to express gratitude, to celebrate the many gifts that have been given here. This community is so self-supporting, even as it gives so generously. And we are, I mean, Unity Spiritual Center is this community. If you're watching this, you are part of our Unity community. And we get to share of the gifts that come in some wonderful organization, Punks with Lunch, who feed our homeless people, RISE, who work with those that are going um, through uh, addiction challenges, and the Sunrise Movement, who supports our earth. And if you haven't seen it on our website, there is delightful videos about five minutes long by the Sunrise Movement, these young people that are doing such great work on our ecology and on our earth. So please do enjoy that. And deep thank you for everyone that is supporting this ministry, even though the building's closed, you know that we are not, we are still here connecting, doing what we can. We're right in the middle of the Adopt-A-Family program. We'll be delivering those things this week. And it's such a joy uh, just to give in this way to create joy in others. And I know that you too have had incredible things happen in your life. Maybe it's a joy of looking at your Christmas decorations. Maybe it's baking cookies. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's a neighbor that did something unexpectedly nice for you. I don't know what it is, but you do. So right now, just open your heart with deepest gratitude to celebrate your personal prosperity as we affirm divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. I praise, give thanks and am glad. And so we are so very glad. Well, Unity is available to you on demand, uh, so you can watch each segment according to your schedule, or you can binge watch us all together. 
And if you're watching this Sunday morning at 1030, we have a live Zoom fellowship. Bring your own coffee. And this Sunday, December 13th at 11 a.m., we have a live town hall with our board of trustees to give you an update on the building and on our COVID response. And, and you can ask questions about anything else you're wondering about. So now I'm going to invite you to either put your hand on the heart or take the hand of the person sitting next to you as we join together in our closing song, I Choose Love, meditation on a next segment. So we finish this part and then go into a time of meditation. Take a deep breath. Feel the joy. Peace in my life is growing because I choose love. Love's always present, it's what I'm made of, I choose love. We are a part of each other, we are one, one tie that binds us, that can't be in my family is rude. 